Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful winter scene with a large mountain and maybe a little cabin or something in the front. It should be fun. And if you're enjoying these and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now I'm just finishing up putting on a little bit of clear gel and white. Not too much, just enough to sort of coat the sky area. I did a, did a nice basic sketch with a soft pink color, and the reason I did that was because then when my other colors mix with it, I won't get anything weird. This is a good safe color for the colors that we have going on in our painting today. All right, so now let's go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and make a, a bit of a sunset, kinda, kinda late evening, a little less sunset than normal. Pretty dark. All right, let's see what that does for us. We'll just stick it right here. That looks pretty decent, maybe a little more yellow. All right. Red. Isn't this pretty? I like this. I think this is going to be a, a very interesting painting. A little different than what we sometimes do. And it's important though that you have this sketch in because if you put this sky all the way across and try to do detailed mountain in front of it, I don't think it's going to work too well. So it's pretty important that you do the sketch first so you can paint around your mountain. Nice. That's probably about as far as we'll go there with that color. Let me wipe out the brush really good. And then I'll pick up some white. And let's see, where's my blue and my red? And hopefully we don't get mud because of the yellow. That looks like we wiped it out enough. Good, and then you wipe about, oh, 99% out of the brush. I don't know, something like that. And come up to the top and then drop in a little bit of a sky on top. Nice. There, I'm finishing up kind of wiping off my sky. You'll see it lightens it quite a bit. I also put a little bit of white in there before wiping it, and it just helps to kind of create that misty effect. Anyway, there you go. Now it's like, look, super dry. Look at that, you can't, you can't ruin it if you want to. So, and in case you have missed the last couple of weeks, I use a shop towel now instead of paper towels for wiping the canvas, because it doesn't leave the little fibers of the paper towel left in there. All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and take our, this is a little bit of a purple color. There's a little bit of orange that'll help kind of make it a little bit more calm. A little black in there would actually be good as well. And some white, <laughs> nothing like using what you've already got, right? Yeah, something in there looks just about right to me. All right, let's, let's throw it up here and see, see what we think. And that's actually not bad, <laughs> considering. So we'll change the color. See how I vary the color each time I reload? It'll be slightly different. See that? That's important. But won't do too much blue, otherwise we'll get green. There. The main thing is try to keep it pretty light. You can always wipe it with a paper towel and it gets quite a bit lighter. All right, we'll just scrub the clouds in with the filbert brush. This brush seems to work pretty good for, for scrubbing clouds. <laughs> this is nice. We're gonna make a lot of a lot of cloud action, but do your best to allow just a little bit of this um, original yellow tone to kind of float through, and then we'll leave several large pockets down here. That'll help kind of make that sunset, maybe even already the sun is already down, this is the last of the light, something like that. That's what we're sort of shooting for. Now I just finished mixing up a nice soft gray, and I've used the palette knife, and the reason is because I wanted several different colors. See that? So I've got some warmer tones and some cooler tones, and there's my blue. And I can have some more, even cooler yet tones. <laughs> see that? And the palette knife kind of helps you to get all those. See, if you did that with the brush, then the brush would kind of all be just one color, wouldn't it? But see, now we can wipe the brush out. This has still had the cloud color on it, just a little bit of scrubbing, that's all it took. And let's start with the cool color, and then you just stick that right up here in the mountain. And then you wipe out your brush, watch this, and you go over here to the warm color. <laughs> kind of fun, huh? It's a way to build a lot of different color in. And if you can build color in your painting, your paintings are gonna improve by 200%. Guarantee it. It's like the number one thing you can do. If you still can't paint a tree, well, you know, that's okay. But if your colors are dead on, nobody will even care how that tree looks. Just trust me. It's like the number one thing. So learn to master your colors in addition to, you know, your actual features of the painting. Nice. And of course, if you need help practicing, we've got a whole bunch of full-length DVDs, or even the downloads are even easier, that you can follow along with. Watch them as many times as you need to. Pause it, stop it, rewind it, right? 
and go at your own pace. Now let's go ahead and just add some snow using our, our detail round brush. And I did wipe this area off. Well, not quite the, I didn't do it right up here, but like down here with the shop towel. And there we go. See, I, I probably could have tried to get a little closer to the edge, but whatever. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. All right, now there's a couple ways you can do mountains. You could take this brush and you can go all the way across and make one big peak. Or you can get in here and do little peaks. Now I think for this mountain, because I want it to appear further away and not very close, we are going to do the little peaks. There, it won't take too long. I mean, that takes a little extra time, but it won't be too bad. Certainly not as long as some mountains. And there we go. Well, that looks nice, doesn't it? All right, I got my white, I don't think I've even showed you, I got my white tinted with quite a bit of red and a little bit of yellow ochre. Not much though. There, that looks pretty good. <laughs> okay, then maybe we just go with, oh, I like that. I even like that curve. Right there, good. Good, good. There, I think I like those strokes. That angle of those strokes actually better than what I was doing. So just play around with it until you get kind of what you want. That looks pretty decent though we're sort of on the right track. Now let's go ahead and drop in some trees. We won't spend a whole lot of time on this but we'll just get a few of them in. You see I quickly did some snow. I actually did a lot of underpainting here just quickly with colors, different kind of colors matching with what we've already got going. Some, some of the stuff in the sky there really just for the most part pinks and a little bit of purple and some browns here and there. Anyway, enough of that. Let me bring down this tree trunk to somewhere in that area. Okay. Don't make them terribly large. It looks like maybe that'll be one of the bigger ones. And we can have a few smaller ones. Yes. Okay. So we'll just sort of build in our little forest. Just like this. That looks decent. <laughs> yeah, decent. Right there. And maybe a couple more. Good. Now what we'll do is maybe up here a little taller. We'll go ahead and just scrub them in. This area is obviously completely dry and there's not much up in this area of the sky. There's certainly basically nothing there on the mountain. So we should be able to get these in pretty solid, pretty dark, and we should have a lot of freedom to highlight. So we'll kind of see how that plays out. You'll notice it'll be a lot easier. We'll get a little extra detail in these trees than we otherwise would have been able to. Nice. Don't ever stop them, right? See that? Don't ever do that. Either go under or above. It's just one of those painting things. There. And it leaves some of that trunk showing. That's why we have that background right there. Now we're going to go ahead and block in the front side of this cabin here. Actually, maybe a little darker than that. I had something a little too light. <laughs> there we go. Just a little bit of brown, red, and yellow. Makes for a decent little color. There. That's not bad, is it? Maybe a little darker yet on this side. There we go. Great. I, of course, like to block in the highlight side, although this really isn't the highlight. It's kind of more backlit, but, you know, it's... It's the highlight side, sort of. <laughs> so anyway, I like to black, block that in. Just a hair lighter than the rest of the building. Just helps to keep things consistent. There. So we'll select something that's darker. Super dark. For this back side of this little attachment here, which is kind of interesting. That looks pretty good. Nice, and it looks like I've got a little bit of a shadow there. My, my sketch is super rough. You could do it with a pencil if you feel the need to get, you know, a little more precision detail in here. But I think something like that should be okay. Let me see, where's my lighter color? We'll do the attachment and that lighter tone because that's facing this direction as well. Cool. All right, now we're gonna do snow on the roof so you can either 
clean that brush up really, really good and make sure it's super dry, or you can just grab a different one. I recommend having a couple of each brush. I'm actually gonna grab a filbert because I think that'll give me a nice rounded off snow effect like this. Oh, there we go. Nice. See that, you kinda want it to look thick on there. Cool, I'm gonna wipe that out. Get a little lighter color. Just see how you play around with color. A painting like this is a lot to do with color. <laughs> nice. And then while we're going, this uh, gotta kind of work on this attachment. There. That looks that looks good. We'll obviously straighten out all the angles in a second. Just sort of working on the basic shape and form of it. Now before we detail out this cabin, I think I'd really love to see some, see some highlight go down because then we can kind of figure out how bright to go with this. So that's what we're going to do. I've got my filbert brush and there's next to nothing on this canvas. I've wiped it really, really good. So we should have no trouble adding at least two, maybe three highlights here. There. That looks decent, doesn't it? So I'm starting with the filbert because it's nice and rough. It'll get that, it'll get that paint smooshed really good into the canvas. And we'll come back with something else, such as, you know, like a, a three-quarter brush. <laughs> Yikes. Sometimes I forget things really a lot, don't I? Anyways, we'll come back in with a three-quarter brush and probably, probably add some nice soft details. And then if we want even more, we'll grab the detail round brush. I don't know if we'll need that much. We'll see. It just kind of depends. And I'm just, while well, I've been chatting here, putting in these little ruts, I don't know if we're going to save them or if I'm going to end up just getting rid of them. I don't know. I just throw them in. That looks pretty good though, doesn't it? So we'll just play around with this to kind of develop the shadows and the highlights. Uh, now right here is important. we got to get that going. This is some, something like a little cliff or just uh, something to break up the snow. Again, we'll play around with this. This is all subject to change, like usual. There, that looks good though. Good start. Just finishing up these little trees with an accent highlight. You see, I just added some trees and quickly threw some snow on. I glopped it on pretty thick with the filbert brush. It's just the brush I had in my hand. But now I'm gonna detail it out just a little more. And I may do more of this later. I'm just sort of get myself started. I'm, of course, using my detail round brush because I don't even have to keep, <laughs> keep saying the same old thing, don't I? Because it's softer and it layers paint better. And the reason I say it all the time is because it matters. You're going to sit up here with something that's really stiff, like a fan brush, which is great for a, a ton of things, just not for details like this. And you'll be frustrated. You'll wonder why it doesn't work right. Well, it helps to use the right tool. It's not necessarily the, the entire thing, but certainly helps. It'll help your painting. There. So we may or may not play around with that a little more. It's just getting a little thickness here. But let's jump over to this building. We need a little bit of a highlight on it. I think I'm going to go pretty subtle today. So let's just take a little bit of our, I don't know, just some random yellow. Actually a little more red into that. There we go. And just stroke it. The more you stroke it, the more it will see that, the more it'll disappear. That looks pretty good though. We'll stick our little windows in. But this at least just gets us a nice, nice little highlight. Mm, maybe more red yet. Oh, that's a little too much. But you see how you play around with color? I love color. We'll just keep playing with color. There. Now let's go ahead and just drop in couple of windows, maybe one right there too. Nice. We can come back and maybe add just an extra flicker of maybe highlight in there with some more yellow. You'll note that I have to, there's a window back there, I have to glop it up pretty thick just to get it to stay. There, that looks good. I like that. See how they're kind of glowing? That's what we want. Now, obviously you're left with very rustic edges. And if you don't want them quite that rustic, you come around them with just a little bit of paint. I'm 
and sort of carve those windows out. There. So that just softens them in a little. Looks pretty good. You can also, while we're going here, while you're kind of cleaning up those windows, you can clean up the eaves maybe of the house. Maybe just scoot a line down like that. There we go, and then blend it in. Lots of nice highlight, shading, detail. Make this thing look really good. I like that. See, it's starting to kind of come together. A couple of darker cracks, I think. There. That looks good. Do some nice dark on this side. <laughs> there you go. See how you just play around? You just kind of enjoy it and have fun. Nice. And tell you what, we haven't really done in a long, long time is a couple of icicles here on the roof. Not many, but certainly just a couple would be fun. Boy, it's probably been years since we've done this. Now the last thing we're going to do is add in some details. Maybe just a couple of tree branches like that. In fact, we can add some more of those with different colors like, um, you know, white. <laughs> that would make sense, wouldn't it? I'm also going to add some dry grass that's sticking up through the snow. Not too much, but certainly some to add some interest to the foreground would be a bonus, wouldn't it? <laughs> there. Okay. Let's see, let's jump over here maybe. We just add a couple over here. Fairly light. You don't want to go crazy dark with them. There. Just build them up like that. Cool. Maybe a little bit more dark. Just change them up. The most important thing here is that you do quite a few different colors of them. There's some dark, almost black ones, just in the corners for the most part. Maybe a couple of branches here and there with these with these colors too. Nice. I like that clump there. What you can do is I don't normally show this sort of stuff so what you can do if you you know have an issue like that just take your this is actually probably not quite enough paint but take your little detail around and sort of this set a little more oh that's pretty it's even a nice color isn't it it's a little more highlight right out on top just to push those right back. Hit it only once, right? Goes without saying. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.